Um, describing Ed in three words, I would say generous, passionate, and kind. Humble, hardworking, extremely talented. Kind, funny, and hardworking. Artistic, caring, and unique. I mean, my goodness. And ability. He can, you know, wield power tools like nobody's business. You put those together and you've got, boom, Ed Allen. I call it the Ed Allen experience. Summarize Ed in a sentence, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I just love people. My history, I guess, my dad and my mother both taught me to be creative, to overcome hurdles, um, and basically produce whatever I needed to get through uh, my days. My dad was uh, as close to Superman as anyone I've ever known. I uh, learned a lot from him, uh, some because he actually shared time with me and, and taught me things uh, purposely, but often it was just uh, observing him at his work. Uh, he told me once, if you need parts for something and can't find them, make them. Yep, that's, uh, that's a hammer that Dad gave me when I was probably seven or eight years old. Uh, he handed me that hammer and taught me how to clapboard a house. We rebuilt it inside and out. Uh, and I started learning a lot about construction as a small child with that hammer. And someday that'll hopefully be my son's souvenir. <laughs> There's nothing that scares me anymore, ever. Right after high school, I joined the Navy Reserves. I've always said that my education started when I left high school, so that was a big part of it. I was a bosun mate. I took care of most everything on the outside of the ship, uh, from the water line on up, painting, scraping. A very brief stop in Vietnam, and uh, that's okay. I didn't really want to spend any time there anyway. Okay. It was left-handed, which was always fun. I graduated this school in 1969. I appeared in a very small part in this play, or in this stage, I should say, um, and I flubbed my lines. So ever since, I've worked on this stage trying to make up for it. I have retired about four times now. I have been a manager, business manager, uh, art director, graphic artist, uh, corrections officer, and dozens of other things. I've worked off and on in the 1980s, building sets for shows here that uh, were fundraisers for the music boosters. Um, and as far as building for the high school and junior high school plays, I think I pr probably got involved about eight or nine years ago. I don't keep track. I know Ed uh, because he has done artwork and set building for many, many productions that I've directed here at Gardner High School. Ed has been an active member of the Music Boosters organization and uh, most rec recently, over the past number of years, uh, been building our sets for the, for the musical. Ed's work, I would describe it as like, you can see the life that he puts into it. He puts in so much effort to make every piece unique and to really do the research and make it fit whatever show we're doing. And he comes up with everything in his own head. It's crazy. Well, I made uh, chandeliers out of creamer bottles and PVC pipe, painted them. And they need to be dropped to the stage when a gunshot goes off. So I made a little contraption that will clamp overhead to the pipes and someone backstage will pull a piece of monofilament fishing line that will pull this out and this will drop. I could have been killed! <laughs> I can't take any more scares! It's just... Ah! <laughs> Ed is just an inspiration to me and a lot of the kids in the drama club and people are going to look up to him for a long time. 
And since he's there for drama and since he does a lot of the sets, he's there all the time. And I think we've created a bond. We've been through a lot together. I feel like the whole drama cast and the crew, we've all been a lot, like we've all been through a lot together. And he's definitely included in that. So I think we have a pretty good bond. Brian, who's my co-director, and I will just say, Ed, in that tone, what do you want now? I can make it happen. I can make it happen. There's nothing he cannot make happen. He's a wizard. I feel he is like next level beyond human. Ed is, is probably one of those people who doesn't have the word no in his vocabulary. And there are probably times that he wishes that he had. Um, but I've not known I've known Ed to always say, yes, and what else can I do? And mind you, the sets he does for us and for the middle school program, he doesn't get a cent for doing them. We don't have any money, we're poor. He just does them. This last week, I got two hugs from two of the performers, and that's my payment. That's all I really care for. Two hugs is a, a million dollars to me. Watching theater is very different than watching a movie. And the way Ed and others that he works with designs the stage that we're looking at, you almost feel like you're on that stage or in that town or in that room that, that the play is taking place in. Even though you're maybe 20 or 30 rows behind, you, you feel like you're part of the experience of the show. I would describe Ed's work as uh, true professional quality. Because we haven't much storage at the high school, uh, this has become a storage for materials. With a lot of times limited resources. Maybe future props, I don't know. <laughs> Who makes the last word, uh, or, or has the last word? We, uh, we play a game, I guess. I try to sell them on my ideas, and probably 80% of the time, I can sell it to someone. The most challenging, I suppose, for me was uh, the double deck play, Anything Goes. We had the stern of a, a cruise ship, and it had a second deck, um, so we had a, a really strong structure for that. Every, every little thing around here throws challenges at us, I suppose. You don't have to tell Ed, this is what it has to be. It's, this is what we would like it to convey and then leave him to his own devices and you will get the product, again, probably better than you would have designed it yourself. The way that he made the board, he took the board of the game Clue and he made it come to life on stage. So you were going to sections of the board game on stage with the characters. Careful, don't get blown on the sofa. Show or piece of a set that Ed has done, it's hard to say because we've had so many great ones over the years. From the plane that he built for the Drowsy Chaperone production that we did, to... Wiz set piece in The Wiz. It was the big set piece where it had the Wiz's face on it and it was really detailed and it was just beautiful. I've never seen anything like it and you could tell that he got it from his mind too. Let me tell you that you've come to the right place. Shall I make you a frog? Like he didn't just look up something and was like, okay, this is what it looks like. He like created it from his mind and you could tell. King! Woo! <laughs> King! <laughs> My favorite like I wouldn't necessarily say memory, but like the things that he would do, he would write little notes and like jokes on the back of his set pieces or like on like countertops or something that he makes. It's and it's always really fun to try and like try and find where he put like little just little blurbs of like information or like his little thoughts that he writes down while he's building. This is one of my favorite things. This was a guitar. It's not a Gibson guitar, but it's signed by Gibson's Les Paul. Uh, he autographed it. 
and it's uh, something that was awarded to me at Johnson Hall a few years ago uh, for volunteering around the city of Gardner. So it's uh, kind of a special thing to me. I don't play guitar, but it's kind of a joy to have. <laughs> he had no idea he was going to get this award, and it was a American flag electric guitar. And when he was asked to talk about, you know, wh why are you being recognized, or what is it that you do for the community, he was he was typical Ed, and said, I, I don't do anything. I just try to help. Ed is not often speechless, but he was, and he has the most dumbfounded expression on his face. What? I'm good at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's probably one of my favorite memories of Ed. <laughs> if Ed didn't work with us anymore, our sets would not be nearly as good as they are. I feel like it would be really hard to find someone to replace him in our like community. And without Ed, we would we would lose the, the type of person that you can call in the middle of the night. Ed's going to be there. He's going to show up. If there's anything that needs to be done, Ed is there to help out. He would just take care of most everything himself. So he hasn't really trained kids to do what he does because, well, who can do what Ed does, really? Um, I don't know what will happen. I hope I'm in the old folks' home by that time and that it's not my problem because I cannot imagine our theater program without Ed Allen, I really can't.